A uh, little shout out to Chad and his staff. Um, he helped my family out probably about four years ago. And um, we, all, we all have uh, Lyme disease. So what we try to do is juice a lot. And uh, we had some ailments that uh, Chad and, and his staff straightened out. So I, I just wanted to say thank you for that. Um, how many people here garden? Great. Okay. Um, how many people who garden do it in raised beds? Okay. Super. Um, a little bit of background on on square foot gardening. Can everybody hear me? Okay. All right. A little bit of background on square foot gardening. Square foot gardening actually started in the 1970s. It was actually invented by a gentleman named Mel Bartholomew. Mel was a retired civil engineer, and he retired at age 42. He, he actually did a lot of civil engineering in New York City. Um, so he's used to working in limited space. What he did was he invented a, a, a method of gardening, <coughs> a square foot gardening, where you don't garden in rows, but you garden in squares. And this was a, a really tough concept for me to understand, and as far as other people, too, who traditionally garden in rows. Uh, why do we garden in rows? Because we've been taught to, right? Because I learned it from my dad, I learned it from my grandfather. Uh, when we, I, I can remember being in my backyard, actually my grandfather's backyard, he came from northern Italy, and we used to be digging up the rows, planting them, we used to catch fish, plant them, plant the fish in the ground right beside the tomato plants for nitrogen. So that's real old school kind of stuff that we actually learned. But so again, about 11 years ago, I ended up getting this book called All New Square Foot Gardening. And All New Square Foot Gardening, uh, somebody gave me this book and I read it probably in about two weeks. And I was a traditional row gardener and I just decided, okay, I'm going to I'm going to test this out. I converted half my gardens to square foot gardens, and I was able to produce 100% of the harvest and 20% of the space. And I thought, you know what? This, this seems to work. So I converted all my gardens to square foot gardens, and then we'd have people come over, and they, I'd send their kids out to pick whatever, and I'd either grill it or we'd put in a salad, and they'd say, how do you do this? And I'd say, go buy the book. It's an easy read. And they say, we don't have time. You do it. And that's how the business was born. I don't have a, a shop. I do most of my stuff online. I do it by appointment only. Uh, what we do is we install gardens. We teach people how to garden. We make our own soil mix. And I'll, I'll get into a little bit of, uh, on those details throughout this. But when it says no weeding, no digging, no tilling, no kidding, it's true. And I'll explain to, explain to you how we, how we get to that. So again, Mel is an inventor, best-selling gardening book. He was on PBS. I don't know if anybody ever saw any of his gardening shows in the late 70s, early 80s. He was on about six years. It was the longest-running gardening show in PBS history. He ended up having... Um, he then left that, and the Discovery Channel picked him up. He had a gardening show on that for about two years. Then he retired again. And then the state of Utah called him and said, hey, we want to develop a curriculum for all school children in the state of Utah to show them how to grow gardens, grow their own vegetables. So he came back out of retirement, developed a curriculum for children, and after, at, at that point, he wrote another book, and we, he ends up certifying gardeners like, uh, like me uh, in, in square foot gardening. It's taught in about 32 other countries. As a certified instructor, I get to go certain places, and I'm invited to certain places to speak. Um, and it's, you know, it works. Is it the best gardening method? I would absolutely say no. <laughs> but it really works for me. And I'm a skeptical person. I really am. And, uh, but having my test gardens and actually doing square foot gardening, it really works. So I want you to know that from a, a, even from a beginner standpoint to a, to a gardener that's been, that's been gardening for a number of years, you can do this. It's easy. All right? What is square foot gardening? It's a simple productive gardening system. It saves you on time, water, work, and money. 
And what is square foot gardening? And compared to a conventional row garden, you can grow 100% of your harvest and 20% of your space using 10% of the water, 5% of the seeds, 2% of the work. Start out with zero weeds. Anybody like weeding? <laughs> There's always usually one or two people that do. So they find it therapeutic. Yes. Okay. There we go. Sit right there. Right. Yep. So this is, can you see all right? I, I don't want to be in your way. Lush and productive. It's a beautiful location. It's a space saver. That's one on the deck. So I'm just going to go over a few basics of square foot gardening. My, my presentation is generally longer than this, but I wanted to get to what's, what probably are the important points about square foot gardening and why is it easy. Okay. First of all, you, we, we go through and actually build, build garden beds, similar to this. Now this one's on legs, but similar to this. It's, just a, it's basically a, a two by eight. And this one's out of pine, we can make it out of oak, we can make it out of uh, cedar, which lasts longer. But this is building boxes. It's just a raised bed, that's all. We're not using any existing soil. We're not using any of your soil at all. So this is building boxes to hold the soil mix. It's a family actually uh, building their own. So how much can you grow in a 4x4? Four four? Now this is a 4x4 four four garden, 4 feet by 4 feet, okay? So you'll notice that there's a grid on it, and in each grid you have a designated growing area. That's the purpose of a grid, it designates your growing area. Because if you didn't have that on there, what would you plant? You'd probably plant in rows, right? Right. So that's a 4x4, four four and you can grow all that in a 4x4 four four. and that. So you can grow one head of cabbage, one head of broccoli, one head of cauliflower, four heads of romaine, four heads of red lettuce, four heads of salad lettuce, five pounds of sugar snap peas, eight bunches of Swiss chard, nine bunches of spinach, 16 small ball carrots, 16 beets, four bunches of beet greens, 16 long carrots, 32 radishes. All in that, all in the spring. These are all spring crops. So you're switching this out, and then you're going to be planting probably pepper, eggplant, tomatoes, cucumber, watermelon, all those summer ones, then for the summer, and then you can probably replant not all these, but most of these in the fall if you want to do three harvests. I do three harvests a year. Some people just do two. Most people do two. But you can do three if you want to. Uh, we make our own soil mix. Uh, we're pretty specific on how we make it. Um, this is my business partner. Where he's actually looking at the, the compost. We make a nine mix compost. We actually learned how to do it from a gentleman in Austria. Um, and he was able to make what they call a humus crumb compost, which is what you'd find in an old growth forest if you lifted up the leaves. It's a humus crumb quality. Uh, the technical end of it, it's a, it's what we like about this crumb is it, it's made up of what they call long carbon chains, at least 45 chains. And it, what it does is if you looked at a carbon molecule under a microscope, it has a lot of nooks and crannies. And what sits in those nooks and crannies are nutrients. And so when a plant wants to want something, it signals to that at the end of its root what it needs. <coughs> And that carbon chain will actually release that nutrient and feed that plant. It's called extraction. And that's what we, that's what we want, to, want to duplicate because that's what nature does. Um, there's other things you could use on your soil, which is like a synthetic fertilizer. And that's what they call absorption. And that's force feeding a plant. The plant gets used to it. And we don't want that to happen. We want the plant to use what it wants and it signals what it wants and it, it's released from that carbon chain. So I know that gets a little bit technical, but that's a little bit of background. We actually went down to Texas to actually learn how to make this. And when we're in Texas, who do we meet? A family from Lancaster County. Why did we have to go to Texas for, to meet somebody? I don't know. But they were, 
they were actually making humus crumb compost. And so we actually partnered with them, and we actually, uh, we, we go down to their farm, they make the humus crumb compost, and then we mix in our uh, certain blend into it too. So it takes about 12 weeks to make. It reaches a temperature of between 150 and 160 degrees every day for about 14 days. Why does it reach that temperature? Because the microbes are actually absorbing and eating and eating and eating. And actually, if you went down and saw that, those rows, you'd see steam coming off of them. And that's, that temperature gets between 140, 150, 55 degrees. The only problem is, is once it reaches that, that certain amount of degree, it actually starts killing live microbes, good, micro good microbes. So what we do is actually when we turn it, and we turn it every day for 21 days, we shoot live microbes back into it. So in the end, what you have is a living soil. A soil that's going to hold a lot of nutrients, it's going to hold a lot of water. And it's going to have the ingredients that your plants need. So I'll show a few pictures of our, of our soil. Now this is, uh, I took this uh, yesterday morning. This was at 6.30. It's a lot of steam coming off that, actually. Um, that's a good picture. So these rows are about 75 feet to 100 feet long. That's our gardening blend. So we make a humus crumb compost with at least nine <coughs> ingredients, nine different types of compost. Can anybody name one type of compost? Leaf. Leaf compost. The cow, horse, chicken, grass. So we have nine different types mixed into this. We also add peat moss. Everybody know what peat moss is? Okay. Um, we've added pulverized volcanic rock <coughs> minerals. Of course, vermiculite. Vermiculite is a mica rock. It's mined. Uh, we source ours out of South Africa and we get it shipped over to Pittsburgh and they have a old, big old heating furnace there that they used to cook steel in and they actually used, converted that to actually cooking vermiculite. And it pops like popcorn when it's heated to that amount of degree and it holds about 10 times its weight in water. The other nice part about vermiculite, it aerates, allows air to get to the roots of the plant which is very, very important. Biochar. Biochar is, is, is half burnt charcoal. Um, what they did was they found a dit or they found a strip of black in a dig in South America. And this strip of black they knew it was man-made. It was about seven feet down. It was an archaeological dig. And they were trying to figure out why did they bury half burnt charcoal. Here what they were doing is they were supplementing their soil to grow maize. The nice thing with biochar is it doesn't break down. Uh, it's about, it'll take about, well, depending on how long you cook the biochar, it can last hundreds, if not thousands of years. It's a very stable carbon and holds water. It's a great, great additive. It's actually charcoal made with little or no oxygen. So we actually uh, have that made actually where, the, uh, where we do the compost. There's a, we inoculate with humus forming microbes. That means as we're turning it, we're actually shooting those live microbes back in this, into the soil. There's another thing we added uh, this year that we didn't have last year. It's crushed crab shell. Uh, not from the Chesapeake, but we added that because of the calcium. It's great calcium. So... <coughs> So that's the difference. This is seed to harvest. Radishes, uh, seed to harvest 36 days. Uh, on the left, facing it, on the left is uh, store-bought, on the right is ours. And probably what I get more excited about is not only the root balls, but the stem sizes on that. Look how thick the stems are. Generally, the thicker the stem on your plant, the more nutrients are being passed to and from. So. so we only 
we only uh, we only grow in six inches of soil. And this was really hard for me to comprehend because I was used to digging down really deep. But I tested it out, and um, if you have a, a nutrient-rich soil, you'll have the you'll have the roots have, roots have a tendency to go out like this versus down. And so uh, we only grow six inches of soil. Now there are some vegetables that you'll want to grow that that need deeper. Asparagus is one. Potatoes. Thank you. Carrots. I'll show you. A, I'll show you an example of a carrot that I grew. Uh, my first year. My first year, I grew a foot long carrot in six inches of soil. There you go, folks. Look at that. Still tasted the same. I gave it to my kids. They took it to school. They're all heroes for the day. It's all shaped carrots. Still tasted the same. But don't grow a foot long carrot in six inches of soil. As I mentioned before, the grid. Why is a grid important? Because it's going to designate your growing area. Without a grid, it isn't a square foot garden. Again, more than likely, you're going to grow in a row. I've installed gardens before uh, at people's houses, and for some reason they, they don't keep the grid on there, and I walk in and they're, they're growing in rows. Just fine. You know, honestly, the bottom line is, is I really want you to be able to grow your own food. That's our whole deal here. Because you can do it. Um, you're going to be healthier for it. And you're going to save money. And you really can do it. It's, it's not hard at all. But without a grid in a square foot garden, again, uh, with, a, with a square foot garden, it's just planting efficiently. That's all. And I'll, I'll show you what that is. Now the nice thing with care, after you've established your square foot garden, what tools will you need when you want to get it ready for spring? Do you need a tiller anymore? Do you need a shovel? You'll need this. This is the, this is the scoop, of, uh, a scoop of compost. Because after you're done harvesting in a square, so this is a square right here. After you're done harvesting in a square, you're going to put a scoop of compost in there. Because the only thing that's really going to be taken out of that that comp, that that blended mix out of our bag is really the nutrients out of the compost. That's it. So you're replenishing with compost. So you need this. Um, <coughs> Anybody have a pen or pencil? Can you hold it up? Congratulations, you're one third of the way there. You already have a third of the tools that you need. You need a pencil to plant plants, seeds. Okay? Third, scissors to harvest. That's it. Took me, uh, I, have 19, I have 19 ground gardens, so I have 14. I have 14 gardens and I have six test gardens. And then I have uh, four of these, four on legs. And to get them all ready for the springtime, this was last year, uh, it took me a, a, like about two hours. Two hours out of, a, out of a day. And traditionally I would have had to get out the tiller and be tilling and creating the mounds. And it just saved me a lot of time really did and I didn't have the time now this year I'm actually the soil people ask me do I replace the soil every year no I don't what I do is I actually uh, take it I just take a scoop of compost and put it, put it in a square and I'm ready to go now this year I'm starting to trade out some of my old soil my old soil is 11 years old okay so if you come by my house and you see you know, you see some boxes that are missing. It's because I've had boxes in the ground for 11 years of that same soil. All right? So it lasts a long time. Does that save you on money? Yeah. 
Great thing is, is with our compost blend, you're not going to start out with weeds. Why? Because we're heating it up between 150 and 165 degrees. It's going to burn off any weed seeds. That's it. Planting. Now this is where it gets efficient. Okay? Think of this as shirt sizes, small, medium, large, extra large. What you're trying to envision is what is the size of the plant once it's fully grown? Okay? A tomato would be like an extra large shirt, right? Okay, so in a square, in a square, can everybody see that? Okay. Plant 16 carrots, not long carrots, 16 radish or 16 onions or 16 chive. So this is a medium shirt. Nine spinach, nine bush beans, nine red beets, nine sugar snap peas, nine pole beans. Four. Four heads of romaine, four heads of butter crunch, four heads of red, four Swiss chard, four kale, four marigold, four basil, four pansy. One. One tomato, one uh, watermelon one cabbage, one broccoli, <coughs> one cauliflower. That's the difference with square foot garden. That is the real difference. And I wouldn't believe it unless I did it. In this garden right here, so I do a test. I want to see how much I can grow. So this garden here, uh, I can plant four heads of lettuce per square. And I plant loose leaf lettuce, like butter crunch. You ever have butter crunch? It's really green, nice leaf. Romaine and red leaf. And I can grow 64 heads here. And if you keep picking the outside leaves of lettuce, it actually causes the plant to overproduce. So I never let the plant ever get to a head, <coughs> ever. And so it'll, it'll overproduce. I've collected 32 one-gallon bags of lettuce out of this. Fortunately, we have rabbits. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I give, I give lettuce away. I trade lettuce. It's crazy. I started, like, my old job and my old, uh, I was taking the lettuce. I had a lot, my own little CSA. My garden's only 12 by 25. It's not that big. But you can grow a lot in a small space if you want And who doesn't like harvesting? Okay, I'm going to show you a comparison. Single row, uh, single row gardening prep. Tools needed: garden rake, rototiller, shovel, hammer. Side where garden should be placed: stake out garden. Designate where rows will be. Rows should go north to south. Rototill, uh, dig out garden. Create mounds which should be two to feet, three to two to three feet apart. Measure pH. Add compost or fertilizer to rows, mix into existing dirt, hammer stakes, run garden twine for vine plants. Plant seeds according to seed package. As seeds germinate, cut the strongest plant and take out and weed. Square foot gardening prep. Tools needed. Trowel, scissors, pencil. Place trellis on north end or raised bed. Add trowel full of compost per square. Plant seeds according to planning guide. Now on the planning guide at our website, and I have handouts up here if you're more than welcome to take. Um, we designate what to grow, when, and how much per square. Okay? So it'll tell you, and I'll show you an example of what it is. You start out with no weeds because of the compost and how close the plants are planted. Now, square foot gardening compared to single row gardening. If you read the back of a seed package, it'll tell you how... how distant you're supposed to put your vegetables, right? So cabbages are generally 18 to 24 inches wide. But you can use four squares. So you can know that either go four squares, one, two, three, four, or an eight foot row. So again, saves you on, saves you on space, right? 32 carrots, two squares are an eight foot row, 18 red beets, two squares are a six foot row, 32 radishes, two squares and an 8-foot row. 18 spinach, two squares or a 4.5-foot row. 64 has a lettuce, 16 squares or a 16-foot row. 
And again, I, I, when I say squares, it's only a foot. It's a foot square. Right? That's a sample of the planning guide. So it designates like onions, 16. Carrots, 16. Helpful hints, slugs. Anybody have problems with slugs? Okay, a cup of beer. This does not mean you go out and you start drinking a cup of beer as the slugs are eating your plants. Okay, don't do that. You just take a cup of beer, you bury it to, to ground level. Slugs will crawl over, they'll drown. They like the yeast. Food grade diatomaceous earth. Diatomaceous earth is cut up seashells. It feels like flour. There are certain people that I know actually drink it. it kills parasites. So, you can actually sprinkle it around. Slug will crawl across it, cuts itself. It doesn't like it. It's really sharp. But it's not sharp to us. It feels like flour. It's excellent also against ticks. Copper wire, you can put copper wire around. A slug will get an electrical charge from it. Now, it's not going to zap out there. It's not, you know, it's not like some big electrocution. It just doesn't like it. Um, birds pass bird netting. You know, that's a hit or miss. If you get thicker bird netting, that's okay. But if you use bird netting that's light, sometimes a bird will fly into it and get caught, and then you've got to get it out. You can do the little windmills. You can buy those little windmills, or you can do the fake owl or fake snake. <coughs> Make sure you move it, because the birds are actually smarter. You know, that won't be thing. You can actually build a mini greenhouse using a 4x4 four four and two PVC pipes crossing them and just put plastic over it. It looks like a tent. But you can actually start earlier because you can create your own greenhouse. Okay, I'm going to show you some pictures. So this yard, chopping down trees, building boxes. Summer. This is 11 years ago, my family, each kid had, our, had their own plot. <clears throat> Back in the corner left, you can see the greenhouse, that, that <coughs> dome. That's 52 heads of lettuce and three cabbages. Some heirloom tomatoes are grow. <coughs> People ask me, is your mix organic? Yes, it is, but I don't pay for the stamp. The stamp's too expensive to me, okay? This is the uh, neighbor kids. It's great. I send them out, they love picking stuff, and I don't have to do it. <laughs> All right. Gardening brings generations together. I learned from my grandfather. This is a great picture. This is uh, dad, his daughter, and his granddaughter. Now, this is down in York. Um, this is a garden we, had, we, we installed, actually. Uh, we put weed barrier down and put the, the gardens in. So then they put a fence around it. And that little, that little window in the back is a kitchen. She'd send her kids out. They'd pass the food through the kitchen window. <laughs> so then they put uh, mulch around it. Somebody's uh, side yard. It's a church. Uh, they wanted to actually grow some vegetables for the youth group. The youth group wanted to raise money for a youth trip. So there was a designated area between their two parking lots, which was stone. So what we did was we put pallets down, and then we put weed barrier down inside the boxes so it would allow the water to drain but not the soil. And so they were able to raise <coughs> some vegetables. my business partner's first year of square foot gardening. <laughs> a little crazy. Now we actually build these uh, we actually build these on legs. These are over at uh, Coco Beanery in Hershey. Um, Hershey Entertainment Resort. Uh, they asked us to if uh, we could put in some display gardens. So we did. And they actually used this, the produce out, for salads, smoothies, <laughs> different things. So that's quite a difference. This is across from the, the helicopter pad. 
It's my daughter last week. She's uh, picking a salad for her next, uh, next day of lunch at school. So this is that garden right there. So that's a lot in a small space. Now that's 12 squares. That's a 3 by 4. That's some Swiss chard, some onions. It's taught in India, Guatemala, Kenya. It's very neat and organized. Spectacular. That's our website. It's your garden solution and solution singular.org. And that's how you can contact us. We're on Facebook uh, at Your Garden Solution. That's our website. Again, yourgardensolution.org. It's our email. You can also contact us through the website too, or you can call us. <coughs> Questions? Yes, sir. That one has a bottom in it, and the other one doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was trying to figure that out looking at the slides. Sure. Does it matter if it has a bottom in it or not? One is a ground garden. So his question is, why does one have a bottom to it, and why doesn't, why doesn't the other one? This is traditionally a ground garden. You don't really need a bottom to it. This is on legs. So what we have to do is we have to put a, a, a bottom on it that lasts long. So this is a pine side, but we use sassafras at the bottom. Sassafras is a very hard wood. It's also used for fence posts. It's similar to locust. It's very dense. The only problem with sassafras is sassafras in northern Pennsylvania and around here only gets to about being that big in diameter. It's really hard to find a big sassafras tree. But we're able to find those, source them in northern Pennsylvania, and actually cut and if you come up here after, afterwards and take a look, you'll see slits that we keep. Uh, so the boards are only about that big, but there's slits in here that allows the water to drain. So once we put weed barrier in, it allows the water to drain, but not the soil. The other advantage to this is I grow produce underneath this. I grow shade tolerant plants, lettuce, for example. A lot more than what's just on top here. You can actually grow it on the bottom too. Because once you water up here, the bottom gets watered. You don't use any pressure treat because of the chemicals in the wood. Exactly. Okay. We don't use pressure treated wood. Why? It's a great question. Because we don't want anything to possibly get into our soil, which will get into the plant, which will get into its fruit or vegetable, which will get into us. So we try to avoid that as much as possible. Now, I've, I've talked to people at Lowe's, Home Depot, and they swear to me that there's not, not any problem anymore. And that's fine. I mean, but I, I just don't do it. Other questions? Well, that uh, raised one would be very uh, helpful to someone who can to a wheelchair. Exactly. The reason why we started building this, my dad's 91. About 15 years ago, he stopped gardening because he couldn't get around. So we did a prototype of this, and now he gardens. Okay. We also build this out of cedar too, but we still use the sassafras bottom. So that looks like a two by twelve this side. It's actually two by eight. I was say ten, but yeah, two by eight. Do you, do you actually make the 4x4 the, uh, four four deliver it to a home and put it in? Yeah, yeah. We can make it or you can make it. I mean, there's some people that make their own. I'll tell you how to make your own. That's not a problem. Or if you want us to, we can make it. What does some of that, what is a twice range or something like that? Uh, for a ground garden installed pine, a 4x4, four four, you're probably looking at like 249. 249, that includes a soil. Includes a grid, includes a trellis, and a box, and a weed barrier underneath. Trellis is important, so you can grow all your vines up. I grew a 13 pound watermelon up. Yeah. Square one? Square one. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Other questions? What's the plastic one? Plastic one. This is food grade polyethylene. We sell these, but you can also get them cheaper too. 
Just go to Home Depot or Lowe's. Order them online. It's going to be cheaper that way for you. But you can't order our soil through Home Depot or Lowe's. They already tried that. Hey, talk about good soil. I actually got a call this year from Colorado. You want to get, care to guess why they want our soil out there? <laughs> to grow another type of lettuce. Yeah. Some of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I was flattered, but yeah. So, other questions? How about watering uh, tomatoes? Okay. That require a lot of water. Yeah, you know, raised bed gardening, I initially tell people you need to really soak your soil. You soak it really well. Once you soak it well, it's going to retain water. But I still would water it. You know, it, I read a plant. If a plant looks like it needs water, I water it. And you'll learn to do that. And I, 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 again, I'll tell people this too. You're going to make mistakes. We all do. It's okay. You know, in the end, you're going to learn from it, and you're going to be able to grow your own food. But this is nice too. I mean. You don't bend down. I love these. If I had my choice, I'd grow all my stuff in this. Because you don't bend down. Now people say, well, what about pests? Groundhogs can't get into this. A rabbit could jump. Squirrel. A deer, you're probably actually helping the deer. It doesn't really have to bend down. Right? It doesn't really have to do that. So. Yes? Have you ever done an apartment balcony application? Yes. How yep. do you handle drainage? Um, you know, I, that's a good question. I don't know. I just put it up there. <laughs> <laughs> she, actually, she actually ended up putting pots underneath. Mm -hmm. So that captured a lot of the water. And, that, and so the water actually was held in those pots. So. Other questions? These are actually, so we, we actually uh, built these, actually did prototypes of them. We actually, these are actually built by two Amish friends of ours. So they're, uh, they're very central Pennsylvania made. Yes? How do you sell that soil that you make? Do you sell it by the bag, by the yeah. cup load, or what? So this is a 60 pound bag. Okay. How many does it take to fill up a uh, four by four? About three and a half. Depending on the thickness of the wood that you use, about three and a half. A, ba a bag costs about thirty dollars plus tax. So, you know, people ask me, "Wow, you know, there there could be an initial big cost in this." Okay, that's true. It could be, but you'll you'll realize those costs savings. <laughs> collecting your own vegetables. And you're not replacing the soil. You're not. So. so after you would initial, buy the initial soil, then the following year you would just, that same stuff, you just take a scoop of that? We actually have a, comp, a specific compost blend that you can buy. It's like $20. It'll last well, that, you. That's something different then. then you yeah, know. it'll last you probably about a year and a half. You, you won't need much. Really, you need a handful for a square or a scoop. So yes, sir? I'm still stuck on a no weeds. I understand no weeds the first time, but what about the second, third, fourth year? No, it's a great question. What about weeds about the second, third, or fourth year? Yes, they'll blow in. They'll blow in. But, you know, the way that you're designating how you're growing, you'll be able to pick them out easily because you'll know exactly where you're putting your seeds. And the other thing too is this soil is very friable and loose. It's easy to pull out, real easy. Okay, one last question. Yes. Have you ever done this for food plots for deer? You're talking about food. Have you ever done food plots for deer? Food food class? Food plots. Food plots. You know, alfalfa or soybeans. Yeah. They actually attract deer. No, it's no. It's the first time I've really heard about that. Wow. No. No, I haven't. Yes? How about herbs? It's <coughs> awesome for herbs. My wife has two herb gardens out back. She goes out, makes her own, out of basil, she makes her own stuff. 
I really don't know what it is, but I eat it. <laughs> but it's really good. So, other questions? Yes. Is it too late to start a garden now? No. You know, you're going to be mostly growing summer. And then you can collect, you know, what I showed up there for the spring, you can collect it in the fall, too. I've, I've sold gardens every month. Every month. Including in the winter. So. No. Absolutely not. What you're going to do is you're not going to grow them from seed. You buy transplants. If they're if they're by seed, yes, it would be too late. But you can easily buy transplants and still produce. Did everybody hear that question? Is it too late for tomatoes? No, it's not. You just have to buy transplants. Those things that, that grow longest, peppers, eggplants, tomatoes, buy transplants. Don't do it by seed. Beans. Bush beans? Anybody like bush beans? Mm -hmm. yeah. I love bush beans. I just uh, just on our Facebook page, I just did a demonstration on how I'm planting my bush beans. I grow 144 bush beans in this square. I collected about nine pounds of bush beans. I froze them. What's that called? Blanching? Mm -hmm. Blanching. Yes. yes. What's the uh, time element for in order to have it completed? Uh, how long does it take? No, what's your delivery time to bring them out? Delivery time, I mean, like as of right now, how backed up we are? Is that what your question is, basically? No, I looked at how backed up. I said, if I ordered now, when can I have it complete? About a week and a half. About a week and a half. Yeah, I mean, how I... How long does it take you to do the whole thing? You just bring it in and set it up? <coughs> yeah, we try to do it, you know, make sure it's level ground as much as you can. I mean, I'll level it out for you if you want. It's gonna. I charge an extra cost to level it out. But if you can, if it's level, it's easy. It's easy. Um, had a very interesting on Saturday. I actually installed two, two of these gardens in somebody's pool. Empty pool in York. Yeah, because they have, they weren't using the pool. And. Uh, yeah, obviously. <laughs> that would get a lot of water. And uh, they wanted to prevent the deer from getting to it. So I crawled down, <laughs> put this garden, I don't know, like, whatever. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, it was a trap for the deer. Yeah, it's all venison there. Other questions? Yes? Would you suggest like the table one Yeah. Yeah, absolutely on a deck. <laughs> and then I would put stuff underneath it. I'd put trays of lettuce or trays of whatever plants that are shade tolerant. She can produce more. Why not? Absolutely. But this, just for an example, this garden here runs about two ninety nine, includes the soil and the grid. This grid here. Just sits right on top. Other questions? So, I have this. It says you can do this. All right? And it's true, you can. And then on the back side is our information. It shows you how much you can grow in a 4x4. Four four. You're more than welcome to take one of these. You can contact me throughout. You know, that's my phone number there. My name's Joe. I'd be happy to answer any questions. If you're thinking of actually doing this yourself, I'd be more than happy to help you. Okay? Call me or email me. I'd be more than happy to explain how you can do it yourself. I just want you to grow your own food. Hey, health care costs a lot, folks. <laughs> Don't we all know this? <laughs> Don't we know it? And it's not going to get cheaper. So, thanks. So everybody's ready to go grow a garden now, right? <laughs> and I'm sure you will have more questions.